What is up, Vinyl community? My name is Corey. The channel name is Just Add Vinyl. We're gonna take a break from the usual today and feature a Edison Diamond Disc Player. What I'd like to do is show you how it works and do a couple needle drops. If that's something you're into, hang out for a few minutes. I think you'll find it pretty cool. Uh, this episode is brought to you today by Rock Chica. Uh, she sent me a surprise package in the mail, and not only was it surprise VCLT, it wasn't the typical size of a 12 inch uh, record. And that kind of threw me off, so I thought, oh, maybe some 45s. She shows a lot of 45s in her, in her videos, so maybe it was some 45s. I crack open the box, and inside are five diamond disc players, or diamond discs. So these are really cool. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the history here in just a second, and the history behind this, and do a, do a needle drop for you. So first, I just want to say uh, thank you, Rock Chica. Check out her channel. She's at Rock Chica M. Uh, give her a subscription and check out her videos. Go back and check out her 2019 vinyl tag if you want to get to know her a little better. Uh, awesome person and been in the vinyl community for uh, over four years, probably five years now. All right, so let's take a look um, at these. So a couple misconceptions here. This looks like a Victrola player, but there are some key differences. Uh, number one is that the uh, Victrola uh, has a different type of stylus on it. it um, the controllers have a steel stylus. This actually has a diamond. That's why it's called a diamond disc player. Uh, that does not read typically the same way your needle reads a, a record or like the Victrola does. This actually has a vertical, uh, the way they record the process, the record and playback is more of a vertical. Uh, the diamond discs are a little bit different. They spin at 80 RPM and uh, the groove size the groove size is a little bit different too so never play an edison on a victrola never play a victrola uh, record uh, 78 or columbia record on an edison player uh, these are pretty cool i'm not sure what they're made of um, kind of a different compound of formaldehyde and some different chemical components um, they're very thick about a quarter inch thick uh, they're pretty durable um, they'll, they'll break during shipping uh, and you don't want to get them wet so uh, she packed these up very well and they, they held up just fine but um, you can you can they can take a lick and keep on ticking um, so uh, let's get into the player and talk a little bit about some of the uh, the music and a little bit about Edison I'll try and keep this moving Edison's known for inventing the phonograph, uh, but it was more of the cylinder style like this, which I do not have one of these yet, but I do have one of the cylinders in an original container, which is pretty cool. Edison was a little late to the party going to the flat uh, way to play records and was a little late to the party there. Um, finally got on board. Um, another thing that really kind of, I think, hurt Edison was number one, his music taste. He only had music press that he liked. So that really limited the availability of music and limited the jazz and blues because he was mostly like a big band uh, and uh, they did like the voice thing, like actors doing voiceovers. Um, uh, eventually he did come around, but probably too little, too late. Um, also reminds me of maybe like Apple where they had the Edison player and only the, com the Edison discs were compatible with it. Uh, so a little bit like Apple there where there's a proprietary and there's a control over it. So um, this, unit uh, was probably manufactured around 1915. Uh, this is made out of mahogany. has a really nice features on it. As you saw, the lid opens up. Um, it has a uh, does There's no plugs. No need to plug this in. Uh, it does have a wind up crank that you can uh, crank over to uh, play the to play the record. So it spins up on a uh, on a spring. Uh, this is called a repeater, I believe. And this repeater has a, a, a needle in it, but the needle almost sits towards the back. It, it really sits a lot different, so it goes down on the grooves a little bit different. Uh, but other than that, it plays from outside to center, our 80 RPM, and it has a very distinct uh, kind of low fidelity sound to it uh, that, that you might remember. The first thing I think of is like a Little Rascals cartoon or something like that. But uh, yeah, we'll take a look at that. Uh, it does have a volume control on it. Uh, it has a baffle that you can use to slide the baffle in and out to adjust the volume. It has some storage built in so you can store your diamond disc uh, down here. And uh, some of the diamond discs, many of them, uh, some of the older ones were just pressed. Uh, it's very hard to make out but you can see where they were a little bit more expensive to do this, but they had a uh, etching in it. And then the later ones come along in the 20s. 
had the paper labels. It also took him a while to get on board with that too. And this is what I want to do a needle drop on is this one of the records that Rock Chica sent was, uh, was the Haunting Blues. It has actually one of my favorite ones to listen to. It had some really cool horn work in it. Uh, you don't want to clean these with water. You want to clean them with uh, is, uh, rubbing alcohol as high as you can and, and not let them get wet because they will warp or crack. Um, let's go ahead and do a needle drop. Take, check out how this sounds. So there you go. I hope you appreciate the needle drop of the Edison Diamond Disc Player. So Loretta, thank you very much for the VCLT. It's very thoughtful and added some really cool additions to the Edison Diamond Disc Collection. So guys, thanks for watching and be back with another video soon. Take care, guys.